Hello everyone, my name is Bindu. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about DAX Studio in Power BI. This DAX Studio is used for a Power BI uh, beginner as well as for an experienced Power BI developer. So, uh, if you have, so if you learn this um, DAX Studio, it becomes very easy for you to learn writing DAX. So now, in a few series of videos, we'll write our DAX queries in this DAX Studio to learn how to use this DAX Studio. So in this video especially, I'm going to introduce you to uh, DAX Studio and I'm going to uh, tell you some of its uh, benefits. So let's get started. Before going to show you how DAX Studio looks and what it actually does, let's first understand what is this, what this DAX Studio is. DAX Studio is a tool it's a third party tool and it is used to write and analyze DAX queries. Usually in Power BI, you'll have the formula bar where you write the DAX queries. There you'll not be uh, able to see the result, result of that query, the result of the measure or calculated column here created. But in DAX Studio, but if you use DAX Studio, it helps you see the results of your DAX queries. So uh, that becomes, so when you are a Power BI beginner, that becomes very easy for you to learn DAX because you see the results there. If the result set is not right, you can always change. You can always modify this DAX query and uh, get the result you need. So that is one use case of this DAX Studio. And the next use case is, um, you usually, uh, when you write DAX queries, when you uh, create a measure, you usually write it in Power BI, uh, in the formula bar of Power BI desktop, right? So you write it in a single line or you uh, just shift enter and go to the next line and write it. But when you hand over that, when you hand over your report to someone else, to some other developer, and if it's a, a complicated measure, complex measure, then it becomes very hard for the other developer to understand your uh, DAX formula. So it is always a good idea to format your code. Uh, when you do your own formatting, I know that becomes very, very difficult when it's a big measure. In this case, you can use the DAX Studio. It's just a, uh, it's just a single click and the DAX Studio formats the entire measure for you. It's very easy. In DAX, we, uh, in DAX Studio. That's uh, one more uh, use. And the third use is um, you create, when you're creating reports, knowingly or unknowingly, you create a lot of measures. And sometimes you realize that all those measures are not needed and you want to delete few measures. Uh, but because it's a big report, it's a huge report, you do not know uh, what are the dependencies of the measure that you are trying to delete. So for that, you want to see the dependencies um, of that measure and if there are no dependencies, then you want to delete that measure if, it, if that's of no use. So in this case, Tag Studio comes in very handy. So using this Tag Studio, you'll be able to uh, find the dependencies of a measure or of a column and then, and then delete it if you think it's not needed. It's and the last one, which is very, very, very useful, useful one for a Power BI experienced level developer, uh, for a experienced developer is performance tuning. This this DAX Studio is very useful uh, while doing the performance tuning. And I know performance tuning is a very huge topic and which we cannot cover it in one or two videos. So, uh, I'm going to cover uh, performance tuning using this DAX Studio in the future videos. But for now, uh, just remember that this is also, DAX Studio is also used for uh, performance tuning. So, in an interview, when some uh, interviewer asks you the uses of DAX Studio, you can say, uh, you can say these four points. The first one, it makes DAX learning very easy. You can see the result set uh, because you can see the result sets uh, in the DAX, in the result set in the DAX Studio. 
it becomes very easy for the developer to write the DAX queries. That's the first use. Second use is uh, formatting of DAX. Uh, it's very useful to format the DAX code uh, because when you hand over your report to someone else, to some other developer, it becomes easy for them to understand the code and rewrite or modify the code if that is formatted properly. So DAX Studio helps in formatting. And the third one is uh, DAX Studio is useful to um, check the dependencies of a column or a measure. So that is useful when you try to clean up some of your report uh, which has some unnecessary measures or unnecessary columns. So it's useful for that. And the last but not least is performance tuning. DAX Studio is helpful in performance tuning. So these are the four points which you need, you definitely need to mention in your interview if this question is being asked. And do remember if you uh, if you have DAX Studio mentioned in your uh, resume, you will have uh, the chances of your resume picking up and you getting the calls is is a little higher. Uh, so please learn the DAX Studio and have this. DAX Studio uh, listed in your resume as well. And now let's see where to install, uh, where to get this DAX Studio from and how to install it. You have to install DAX Studio. The first thing you have to do is go to uh, go to uh, this page DAXstudio.org and downloads. So this is where you go and you will always have the latest version of DAX Studio here. You click on this and download it and install it on your um, on your on your machine okay so once this is installed this is how it looks okay so we have the DAX studio open here and now we have three sources three data sources where uh, through which we can connect and the first one is power pivot model which you connect to the excels and the second one is pbi um, pbi power bi desktop model and the third one is tabular service so when you're working with a Power BI desktop, what you usually do is you directly connect it from Power BI, Power BI desktop. For, so for that, you don't even need to open a uh, DAX Studio like this. You, uh, you'll you you'll have this uh, DAX Studio embedded in your uh, Power BI desktop. So now let's go and open an uh, existing report in Power BI. I'm going to open this one. So uh, my sample report is open here. Uh, now to connect, now we have to connect this to DAX Studio. So for that, uh, on the top you see this external tools, right? You click on this external tools and you have uh, DAX Studio in here. So when you click on this, DAX Studio gets opened and that is connected to this particular report. Okay, so when you click on this DAX Studio, DAX Studio opens and you don't have to uh, connect to the PPI model. Uh, so uh, while we uh, open the DAX Studio there, it's one of the data source. So when you clicked on this DAX Studio, DAX Studio is open and it is already connected to the uh, data set here, data set of this report. So the one, the fields you see on the uh, right side of this Power BI desktop, you see it on the left side for this DAX Studio here. And now if you uh, want to write the DAX queries, you can um, always write your queries here. Uh, now let's see what queries you can uh, run using this DAX Studio. Let's say, let's say you want to see the data. Um, <coughs> let's say you want to see the data. You want to visualize the data that's there in a particular table so that based on that result set, you can um see if you have to add any filters or um, modify your query based on that based on the result set so for that to see the results in a particular table um uh, let's say you want to see the results of uh, this product table you click on this and you say preview data okay when you say preview data, you have uh, all the result sets here in the results pane here and the query is also listed here, here, right? And uh, the query 
is generated by itself. Always the query starts with evaluate in DAX Studio. And if you want to see top five rows, you can always change this to top five rows. So remember DAX Studio, it always gives you the results in tabular format. When you have a scalar results, you have to uh, change the query a little bit to get the results. Uh, when I mean scalar results, let's say you want to see the count uh, of rows of a table. So to get the count of rows, you have to say the, uh, uh, the usually the query is count, right? Count of product and you give the uh, uh, column ID there. ID. This has to be the this has to be the syntax of count. But you see the result, but uh, when you run it, you're getting an error here. So when you do this, when you put them in curly braces and run it, you see a value. You see the value as 24 because count gives you a scalar value. It's just a count. Uh, it takes the values of a tabular. It, it takes the values of a table and it... Um, and it is getting the count of it. Count is a scalar function. So in that case, you have to enclose enclose these uh, this formula in a curly brace. Okay, in the curly braces, then you get the results in a tabular format in the DAX Studio. So that's how you write the DAX query um, in DAX Studio. <coughs> And the next use of DAX Studio is formatting. So you just click on the measure. You uh, the you just click on the measure that you want to format and say define measure. And you just highlight this measure and click on uh, the format DAX uh, uh, format query. It is that simple. Um, you don't have uh, it's a, it is just one click for uh, formatting your DAX query. And this is one use of uh, DAX DAX Studio. And the other one is, as I told you, if you want to see the dependencies of a measure or, or a column, that it is used for that as well. So you click on the uh, measure that you, uh, for which you want to see the dependencies and say, and you say, uh, define dependent measures. You say, show objects that reference this measure. Okay. So this show you the, so this show objects that reference this measure shows you all the fields, all the measures that are related and define dependent measures will only show, will only show you the dependent measures. If there are measures, um, if there are some uh, measures created using this measure, those measures are shown. Let's see that. Dependent measures. So, uh, these are all the dependent measures last two month net sales um, net sales net sale pm nets last two month net sales so these are all the dependent measures of this measure okay uh, and the next use of uh, DAX studio is um, exporting the data i forgot i forgot mentioning this before um, so when you have to export data to some CSV or to some SQL table, uh, to a SQL table or anything, um, you can do it in Power BI as well. But in Power BI, what you do is uh, you go to you go to the data tab here, and you go to let's say you want to export products. You want to export products table. You click on this product table, and you copy the data and paste it paste in an excel excel file or csv whereas you can do that using dax studio easily okay so you click on dax studio um, you uh, go to uh, product uh, you uh, click on product and in advanced you see something like export data so you click on export data and you can select it you can select the options here. You can either export it to CSV or you can directly export it to um, to the um, SQL tables. Uh, for CSV, you just have to choose the path here and um, select it and just save it there. So that is one use. And, and the next and the next uh, use of it is performance tuning. 
uh, for now just remember uh, this is tag studio is used for performance tuning and in the future videos when we get into complex tax queries i'll show you how to use this tag studio to do the performance tuning so this is about tag studio i hope and now you got to know at least the basics of tag studio and how to use this this tag studio uh, learning this tag studio having knowledge about this tag studio will help you a lot in getting a job in power bi please remember you have to learn it and also don't forget to mention tag studio in your power bi resume once you have this in your resume once you have tag studio mentioned in your resume the chances of getting a call increases a lot just learn tag studio and include this in your resume and then uh, see if you if you get uh, more calls or not i hope uh, this topic is clear now uh, if you like this video please hit the like button if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do subscribe see you in the next video thank you